Welcome to Raising Your Spirits. Our hope is to help you make positive changes by providing guided messages from spirit. Tuning forks, crystals, and distance healing are how we pass those messages from spirit to you. Sit back relax and enjoy your vibrational growth with us your host for this version of raising your spirits tony Ginnis. hi everybody glad you could make it to another edition of tuning in with tony today we're going to be talking about patience versus waiting now in the very beginning it seems like they're the same thing when you're patient you're waiting for something but vibrationally they are two vastly different things so we're going to take a little deeper dive on what the difference is and why it is so important to be able to be patient more than the feeling that you're waiting for something. First of all, today's color is blue or red. The red or the blue. And just as you're listening to this right now, what color resonates with you right now? Is it more blue or is it more the red? What would be the color resonance where you are right now? Chances are if you're busy doing something, you're busy doing groceries and you're busy in your office and so on, you might want to go more towards the red because that's the vibration that you need to get those tasks done. It's all like in a checklist. It's all very assertive and it's right, let's just get this going sort of thing. If you're relaxing, maybe watching TV or looking outside, or maybe you just came back from walking your dog, then you might be more in the blue resonance, the blue color, that blue energy. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that as to how those all come together. The theme today is all about acceptance, to be able to accept who you are, because the moment you accept anything, creation happens. The moment you accept that you're a great architect, then you can go into that profession creating something. The moment you are accepting that you're a great mechanic or that you're a, a great provider or that you're a great uh, writer or a musician, whatever it is that you feel that you accept, you're going to be very good at. Because acceptance is all about happiness. It's all about bringing something together and yes, you do accept it and that's usually tied to happiness. And anything that is happiness oriented has a high vibration. You're excited. You want to get going. You can't wait to get up in the morning to start whatever it is you're going to do. So you accept it and you're happy, which means you will be good at whatever it is that you want to do. So the opposite of patience is impatience, which is the same as waiting. Most times when we think of waiting, it's usually a negative experience. Have you noticed that? It's really hard to be happy waiting in line for concert tickets or waiting in line for a movie or at the doctor's office. Or very rarely a good experience. So it has sort of a negative experience because you realize that it's taking part of your time and you just want to get going. So it has a negative experience. Patience, although, on the other hand, is a positive experience. I'll give you a great example. Doing puzzles. Like when you do a puzzle, you could be opening up a box of a thousand pieces. And if a person is impatient, that is probably the worst game that they will think to do because they'll want to get the puzzle done right away. That's the whole purpose of that red energy. Let's just get down to the bottom of the list, get everything checked off, and then move on. That's how it usually will work for an impatient person. But a person that is more the blue energy, they choose a puzzle not to get it all done and look at it in its finished position. It's all about just practicing the patience, the sorting, putting the colors where they need to go, using the flat corners, getting the border around first. It's all about strategy and you put in that time and you're happy 
I mean, you could be working on a puzzle for two or three hours and have an amazing time, okay? Because for you, it is just trying to strategize and getting all the pieces to fit together in the colors and everything, all right? And this is why that puzzles are uh, usually a good experience. Another one is watching a robin make its own nest. If you're sitting outside and you're looking at one of the trees and you see a robin come in and make its nest and so on, getting ready for their young and putting the eggs in and so on, that would be an amazing experience for that person because they're in that zone where they just want to see what the world is doing and they're living in the moment. And so anything that has a flow to it is mesmerizing. Another one is a butterfly coming out of its cocoon. That's a great one because so many times we see that the cocoon is already starting to clear up and we're starting to see a butterfly is in there but having some difficulty in trying to get out. It's moving its wings, it's doing whatever it needs to do, but it's having quite the time. But a person that is patient will just watch it and note whatever is going on, observe, and do nothing other than just be in awe of how nature is creating itself. I mean, if you look at it, butterflies have been around for literally millions of years in different insects that have that same cocoon type creation. But a person that is in that blue patient zone won't want to intervene. They'll just want to see how the butterfly comes out of this particular cocoon. They know that none of their involvement was needed before the millions of years. So they just let things happen. However, a red energy person will look at it and realize that the butterfly is having some difficulty coming out and they'll watch it for a while until they become impatient and then they'll want to help the butterfly come out by cutting away perhaps part of the cocoon to try to help this little guy come out only to find out that the wings aren't developed very well because that was the point of the struggle is to make that butterfly strong enough to fly. If they intervene or if someone intervenes, then the butterfly will have a good chance of not being able to fly for the rest of his life. People that are more patient are more in the blue energies and they go with the flow, they go with whatever the universe is going on and the red energies are more assertive, more impatient. And that is connected to waiting. So although they look the same when you just look at two people that are just sitting and they're not doing anything, it looks like they're doing the same thing. But vibrationally, each person is going through a different experience for sure. And this red-blue dynamic flows into many other areas of our culture. If you look at the movie The Matrix, remember the one scene when Neo, uh, Keanu Reeves, was presented two pills. One was red and one was blue. One would keep you in that energy or in the fantasy for as long as you want. And the other pill brought you to reality of what's really going on. So there's those two dynamics, vastly different. Uh, it also comes into our sports. If you look at, uh, let's say, the USA and Russia playing together in an all-star game, usually the U.S. will be wearing the blue jerseys and the Russian would be wearing the red, you know, two opposite sides. Toronto Maple Leafs and Montreal Canadiens, those of you that are outside of Canada and not too familiar with our hockey team, uh, they've been rivals for decades. And it's that red-blue. Montreal is the red uh, team and uh, the blue team is the Toronto Maple Leafs. And they've been trying to battle for many, many years. Another one is Boston Red Sox and the New York Yankees. They always battle it out, trying to figure out who will be the winner for this year. It even flows into our political arena, where we look at the liberals being red and the blues being conservatives. Again, you've got those two opposites. 
And so what does this really mean? It just simply outlines that when we talk about two different polar sides, two different energies, one is more patient and wants to get things done in a certain way, and the other is a more assertive, wanting to get it done right now. Some of the stats that we talk about, if we just look at the uh, concept of waiting, we spend about three years of our life waiting in line for something. Now, and this does not include, of course, waiting for Mr. Wright or Mrs. Wright. It does not include trying to get into the right body, waiting for that, waiting to get an opportunity within your company, waiting for the right time to have a child, or even waiting to get a raise at work. That's over and above. We're just talking about waiting in line roughly three years. Now, with all of the online purchases, we sometimes we wait to get various tickets and, and sometimes there is a waiting part there with, and we, we do all of that. But that's one of the reasons why people go online so they don't have to physically wait in line. It's much shorter going online because people feel that it is better to go online and even have the risk of putting your credit card out there, but it's still worth it for so many people because by the time they get to the concert or by the time they get to the movie, their tickets are already waiting for them. All they have to do is pick it up and go in. So for many, it is really worth it. And talking about lineups, if we look at a grocery store, a study was done a number of years ago where an average grocery store lineup took seven minutes on an average day. This does not include if you're going on a Saturday or at Christmas or Easter, whenever there's a, uh, a big holiday and then the lineups are longer and the waiting times are longer. In a doctor's office, average time is 24 minutes, but it can be as much as 40, 50 minutes in some cases, if it gets really busy and there's a lot of emergencies and so on. An ER visit, four hours to get from walking into a hospital in an ER that something's going on to seeing a doctor. And sometimes that is also extended depending on the season or how many emergencies that there are. It could I've seen myself wait up to eight hours to see a doctor. But it's all about that waiting. But when the people that are in that red energy, that more assertive energy, they describe waiting as, and I quote, a timeless form of torture. <laughs> when they are looking at waiting, they do not like to wait. Just give a busy person one that is just all over the place. There's running here, running there, and just get them to wait for like two minutes. I guarantee that in those one or two minutes, they'll watch their clock five or ten times just to see what time it is and because they don't want to wait. It's just as simple as that. And when we look at the actual waiting times alone, another, this same study, when they looked at the various ways that our entire nation waits, it was estimated at 37 billion hours that we wait in line for. We wait in line for concert tickets, for at the DMV when you're renewing your driver's license or whatever. We wait for so many things. It's just gotten worse over the last couple of years. So how are we going to use those millions or billions of, of hours that we're waiting for something? Because we have the concept that if we're standing and there's somebody in front of us and we're waiting, that we're wasting our time. That is the concept with many of the people that are more assertive, more in that red energy, okay? Another study was done in 2015, and this was interesting when I saw this one, because it was found that the average human's attention span was clocked at a whole eight seconds. Eight seconds! That's one full second shorter than a goldfish. Because a goldfish has an attention span of nine seconds with the various tests that they've done and the studies that they've done. Nine seconds. And we haven't attained yet that yet. 
There are so many things in our minds, so many things about advertising, so many things going on that we have a hard time focusing on just one thing for more than eight seconds. And many things are much less than eight seconds. We look at, I mean, if you look at the various ways that people are now running social media, they're saying if you don't capture the person's attention in the first five seconds, they could be going on to another video. So we've been trained and uh, conditioned to be able to just wait just a few seconds. And if we don't get that instant gratification, just to move on and forget it and see what else is going on. How many people do you know that they're watching a TV show and throughout the whole half an hour, they're changing channels? Like they can't even decide on a channel to stay on and they'll watch it for five minutes and they'll go on to another movie or another show and watch that for a few minutes and they're back and forth. I know several people that are channel hoppers. They're on there for a few minutes and then they get off. And this sometimes is irritating for me because I just get into whatever the show that's on and they just say, no, no, I don't like this. And they change the channel. So it's, uh, it's sometimes frustrating, but it is what it is in that way. But there are, are so many reasons why people have this short attention span. And this, of course, flows right into our driving. This is exactly why texting and watching our phones while we're driving has become such a problem. We become addicted to our phones because our phones have the ability to give us so many varying ways that to entertain us. They can play a video. They, we can watch a text. We can go onto X or Twitter and be able to go through the news. And, and it's very fast and it's, it's very accessible as well. So when we're driving and we think we can do this, this is one of the reasons why people do text because they feel that driving is boring. Have you ever heard that from a, a, a young person or a person just starting to drive? Like once they start becoming familiar with the, uh, the driving, the rules of the road, the braking, if you are driving a standard, once you get used to the gears and the clutch and so on, and just once you get used to driving itself, after a while, it becomes automatic. It's habit. In fact, if you drive enough, sometimes you'll be able to go 10 kilometers and not remember anything because you're, you're wandering. You, you might be, and you shouldn't be, but people do that. People are not really focused on the road. They don't focus so much. I think one of the best drivers are the ones that also drive motorcycles. Because if you're driving a motorcycle, you know that things are serious and you can't just wander around because you're only on two wheels. Somebody could come out and you would be really in trouble because you have no protection. At least in a car, if you lose control, you've got the side of the car, the back of the car, and you've got about 5,000 pounds of metal that could protect you. Not so much in a motorcycle. When you're driving a motorcycle, you're driving for everybody else on the road. I find that when I'm on my bike, I am much more focused and I really look at what I'm doing, when I'm doing it, because you can't even wander off for a second, not even, uh, even a fraction of a second, because there could be a pothole on the road that could just be a problem for you swaying and getting out of control, or somebody could cut you off. So you're always looking at the mirrors and what's in front of you. And I think those are the, one of the best drivers because it takes an incredible amount of focus to be able to ride a motorcycle effectively. But when you are driving a car, you may think that the world is going rather slow. So they think, when I say they, the people that have been driving for a long time and driving is almost second nature, they feel that their driving ability is so good that they could fill in that what they call a gap by texting or even maybe watching a video. And I can't understand how people could watch a video while they're driving or watch Facebook or anything. But whatever it is, the texting is becoming a real issue. 
Last year alone, 40,000 plus injuries and death occurred in just Canada alone. This is caused by, of course, impatience, and it's caused by just people being distracted. It also includes eating. It includes uh, talking on the phone. Let's say you're in a very heavy conversation. I mean, if it's something simple like, you know, honey, I'm going to bring home some milk and eggs and drop by, not too bad because there's not a lot of emotion behind those kind of phone calls. However, if you're trying to negotiate a contract, a deal, and there's a lot of things going on or somebody calls and they're really upset and there's a conversation and it's really heated and emotional, that's the time where over 50% of your attention will start going to the conversation and not focused on the road. And it's the road that's the big deal right now. Because it could either hurt somebody if you lose control, if you hit somebody, and God knows what could happen. You'd have to live with that uh, trauma that you might have hurt somebody just because you wanted to be on the phone with somebody. And people don't think of pulling off on the side, which is the smart thing to do, that is the thing to really do, is to pull off, make your phone call, do your thing, and then get back on the road when you can. Technology has really taught us this instant gratification with the phones and everything it is. I mean, if you just look at one of the songs from Queen, you know the song I mean? I want it all, I want it all, and I want it now. (laughs) And it's so indicative of how our culture deals with things that we want. We don't want to wait. We want it right now and we want it all. Where back in my day, I mean, uh, and I'm going back 40 years, 50 years even, when we wanted something, we wanted a car, no problem. Just get a job and save up and get it done. You can get a car. And so I did. We ended up doing the work. And um, so we had a focus and we, we waited for it. But it wasn't so much waiting. It was a goal that we had to do. And we were just patient until we got enough money or the opportunity presented itself to get a car, and then we got it. But these days, it's a little different. Our phones, is everything is instant gratification. So let's just summarize just a little bit. When a person is patient, okay, you let things come to you. In other words, you let things unfold. You let things just happen. You have, a universe has this, natural flow of things. If you want something bad enough, we just think about it, daydream about it, and it just slowly will come to us. So patience energy or the blue energy is more about that. When money is needed, we have the belief that when money is needed, it will come. And if money isn't coming, that simply tells us, the blue people, that Money's not needed. Money is not necessary in this particular time. So then we think of, okay, there's something else I need to do. The other thing is you live life. You don't wait for anything. If something happens where there's a delay, no problem. We just go and do something else. If you're waiting in line for uh, concert tickets, then you just uh, think about uh, what the kind of things that you can do when you get back uh, to the office, maybe to write a book or memoirs or or maybe think of different ideas. So you're not actually waiting. You're using that time effectively. When I take my car in to get fixed or my motorcycle to get fixed, and I might have to wait sometimes up to two hours to get this done. While I'm waiting, but I'm not actually waiting, I'm actually right deep in trying to create a new meditation uh, series, or I might have some ideas on how to make my office more efficient, or I might. And so the two hours goes by so quickly. And then when somebody says, sorry for the wait, I says, ah, it's okay. I I didn't feel I was waiting, you know, because I was busy doing something else. And so it it wasn't so much I'm just sitting there doing nothing because I used up the time. Or you can just rest or do other things. The other thing about being patient is you really got to know what you want. What do you want? Most people think they know what they want. 
But statistics show that a lot of people don't know. They think they know. If somebody says, what do you want out of life? Or what would make your life really, really amazing? They'll say, oh, if I had a million dollars, that would be great. So it always comes down to money. It always comes down to that. But then when the money comes, then other problems happen and so on. The thing is, you really got to spend a lot of your time to figure out what it is that you really want. If you can answer this question in under a minute or two, chances are it's not the right thing. If you haven't spent any time figuring out what you want, I asked a client recently, what is your ambition? And they replied by saying, I want peace, I want to be relaxed, I want to be prosperous, and I want to have air, I don't want any problems. Well, those aren't wants. Those are after effects. In other words, that's the byproducts of other things that you want. Because... To find peace, what does that mean? That's not really a want. That's an effect. If you really work on yourself, you meditate, you walk, you are part of your community, you have a successful business, everything's going just the way you want it because you're letting it happen. And then peace is a result of all that. Then you feel peaceful. You feel good and grateful of all the things you have in your life. And That has a result of peace. That has the result of feeling prosperous and grateful. So to say that what I really want is peace, you got to start looking deeper and finding out what will cause that peace. And it's not going to be always about money. Now let's talk about the waiting category, okay? This is sort of the red energy zone. That you believe that you got to go out there to find out what you want and go get it. And yes, that has worked for many, many decades. When people say, yeah, just go out there. I mean, you're not going to get anything sitting at your house. You got to go out there and get it. And that is true. However, it doesn't mean you have to do it physically. Okay, so let me just reiterate that. The people that have the belief that they have to physically go out and go get it and bring it back, if they have that belief, they will be working a long time and working a lot harder than they need to be. Spirit is saying that does work. That's an option. It's just that it's so much more difficult. It's easier just to be in that state where you're ready to allow something to come in and not wait. There's no waiting because waiting equals impatience. And impatience is a negative experience. A negative experience will not have a positive result. Okay? So it's all about putting yourself in that position where you're patient and it doesn't feel like you're waiting. Another thing about the waiting concept is that they believe that money is the solution for everything. If I have problems, just throw money at it. If I don't uh, have enough time in my life, I can just hire a coach or I can hire somebody to get that work done. And it's all about money. And although it does free up a little bit of the options that you might have, it's not the final solution. Again, we come back to that. They have a high expectations of getting things done fast. When you don't want to wait, you want it done right now. You're ready to leave yesterday. Not sure what will bring happiness to you. You're relying heavily on wealth and making things happen that way. And basically, people that are waiting are usually unhappy and stressed. So just to look at the general part of this, which category are you in? And there are some, of course, a middle ground here. The people, um, with, with some belief, they think that people are here to be used and things are made to be loved. Another one is people are here to be loved and things are here to be used. So which one resonates with you better? Do you feel you have to get people to do things for you You're going to use people and you love things. You love your car. You don't want any scratches on it. If there's even a fly that flies on it, you'd go really, uh, you know, very stressed. 
You don't want you parked very far away in the grocery store so nobody will bump your car and yet you'll leave maybe your child in a a chair or in a uh, grocery cart while you're shopping and while you're doing other shopping and you know leaving them alone not and I've seen that in a couple of instances where someone will just leave their child in a cart and go to the next aisle to get a few things and come back I've seen that whatever it is for you what is your definition of it Buddha has once said that the soul that is waiting will take a lifetime to manifest anything. However, a soul that is patient will manifest instantly. In this waiting, what we want to do is bring in the energy of what has waited for so long. We're going to play the mountain meditation in this segment. Because mountains, I mean, they wait all the time, right? They have a lot of patience. So we're going to play that mountain meditation. So I want you to breathe in the color red, okay? Fire engine red. And when you exhale, I want you to exhale and see it in your mind. You're exhaling blue. You're breathing in red and exhaling blue. All right? Start with that. And then as soon as you connect and the music starts and the frequency of the tuning fork start, I want you to then ask the mountain, because that's the mountain meditation. You'll hear the wind in the background. And so it's that mountain energy. And it has been here for millions or billions of years in some cases. It's been here for many millions of years. So the patience is there. I want you to envision that there's a mountain in front of you and you're asking the mountain, How can I be as patient as you? Okay, so let's try this. Breathe in red, exhale blue, and we'll see you in about 15 minutes.
the snow glows white on the mountainside. Not a footprint to be seen. A place of isolation. And no one here is mean. The wind is howling like my childhood storm inside. Couldn't keep it in. Heaven knows I've tried. Didn't let them in. Didn't let them see. Be the good child you always had to be. Conceal it. Don't feel it. Don't say a word. Stay in a corner so you are not heard. Don't let them know who you are as your real identity hides too far. The mountain says, let it go, let it grow. Can't hold it back anymore. Let go of the fight. Let go of the angry stack. Turn away, and then don't look back. I don't care what they're going to say. The mountain inside of me is going to stay. Let the outside storm rage on. The mountain's wind protects me till dawn. It's funny how the mountains make everything seem so small. And the fears that once controlled me can't get to me at all. It's time to see what I can do to test the limits and break through. It's time to let the mountain out inside of me. It's time for me to just be. No right, no wrong, no rules for me. I am finally free. Let it go. Let me grow. I'm peaceful as the mountain snow. I am one with the wind and sky. You'll never hear me cry. Here I stand, and here I stay. Let the storm rage on for another day. My power of the wind is blowing to the peaks. My soul is spiraling, creating cloudy streaks. And some had thought that I was weak, and always last. I'm never going back. The past is in the past. Let me grow. Please let me grow. Just stand back and watch me glow. And I will rise like the dawn. That perceived perfect child is long gone. Here I stand in the light of day with nothing to prove and no one to pay. For the mountain I climb is not for others to look up at me. It's the inner mountain I climb. That's my identity. No more pretending, and no more shame. The size of the mountain and I are the same. Thank you for listening to Raising Your Spirits. If there is a subject you would like to hear in a future podcast, or would like to book a session with Tony, reach out to his Facebook group at Genis Shields Natural Healing Center, or group tuning classes with Tony on his online virtual weekly classes. The YouTube channel is Suzanne and Tony 17. That's Suzanne and Tony, all one word, and the number 17. And the website is lovehigherself.com. Until next time, namaste. Hey.